Hey guys, today I'll be answering your questions. So check it out. Hey guys, Carlo here. Today I wanted to answer your guys' most frequently asked questions. I really wanted to put this video together to be candid about it. Uh, I know you guys asked me about my YouTube channel, my boxing, my personal life. And I figured what better way than to answer these questions on a video for you guys. Uh, so I put a list of questions on a piece of paper here and we'll just go off the top of my head with answering them. That way you guys can, I guess, get to know me a little bit better. So let's go ahead and get it started. All right, so question number one is how often do you train? Um, generally speaking, five to six days a week that I train. Um, I usually do three to four days of road work. Sometimes I'll supplement that road work. And usually when I do road work, it's anywhere between three to five miles. It just depends on how I do that day, but at least a minimum of three miles of road work. I have so many running shoes I've gone through over the years. Um, between my Asics, I have Brooks running shoes, you name it. Uh, so I usually do road work. If I can't do road work, then I do have a local gym membership to a regular gym. Um, and I'll do like stair climbers. I'll do sprints on the that assault treadmill, the one that you have to push with your own power to get the, the, the treadmill portion to move. Um, but generally I'll do three to four, uh, three to four days of, of um, you know, road work and doing something like a step mill. And that's gonna be separate from my actual boxing training. Uh, boxing training, anywhere between five to six days a week. Um, I usually train both in group classes. So I'll do a group class for like an hour where I'm in a group and we do all types of different drills, heavy bag drills, partner drills, you name it, sparring. Um, and then I also work with a local boxing coach, uh, Tommy Roberts. You guys have probably seen his videos. He's been in many of my videos as well. Um, he works at this place called Apex Performance Facilities. It's a professional sports performance facilities in Phoenix, Arizona. And I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one training with him. Uh, coach Gonzalez out in T Tempe. Um, uh, there's another gym, uh, uh, Team Hoye uh, Boxing Academy in uh, Chandler, Arizona. So I'm a little bit of a gypsy. And a lot of that has to do, just do with, I have a lot during my day that I have to, to do between my personal work, my personal life, family, boxing that I have to have that flexibility to be, to be able to train at different places depending on where I'm at uh, that day. So um, yeah, typically anywhere between uh, five to six days a week. And when I was younger, I used to train a lot harder and more frequently. All right, next question. Do you get paid to do reviews? And this is a question I get all the time. It's definitely a fair question to ask. And my answer to that is no, I do not get paid to do reviews. Now I do wanna clarify uh, when you say paid, means do I get any type of monetary payment money, right? So if they PayPal me, do they Zelle me? Do they send me something on Cash App? Do they send me a check in the mail? Do they physically can come hand me cash in hand? Um, no, I don't receive any money from the reviews, nor do I receive any money from the companies that send me free gear. Now, that's another thing. I do receive a lot of free equipment. And over the years, when I first started the channel, I didn't receive anything. It was all stuff that I purchased. And I still do. A lot of the equipment I still do purchase on my own. I have my own nine to five job, so you know I can afford to pay for the equipment myself. But it's gotten to the point now where the channel has grown to where it's at. And a lot of companies do send me free gear, whether it's boxing gloves, headgear, um, you know, groin protectors, you name it. I mean, other stuff that's boxing related, that's not like a boxing glove, like the InLab X, those push-up uh, training devices, um, the Evnik trainer, I mean, you name it. A lot of companies will send it to me and say, hey, we're gonna send you this, just give us your honest review, let us know what you think. And 90% of the time, they're really cool about it. Like, they'll just send it out, and they'll see my video after I do a review and nine times out of 10, they're, they're really pretty cool and chill about it. They'll be like, hey, Carlo, thanks for reviewing our gloves. And, and they usually will like DM me on like Instagram or they might even send me like an email uh, because I put my email on my, my social media account so you guys can email me. Um, but they'll actually contact me and be like, hey, that, that review is really dope. Thank you for saying that. Uh, we'll improve on these things. Or they might even correct me and be like, hey, hey dude, like you forgot that this is that certain model or you forgot to say that it's available in this many sizes or you got the colors wrong and then i'll apologize and be like you know my bad i screwed up and i should have added that in the video or i should or maybe in the video i'll like edit it and i'll put it down below so 
Um, they're pretty cool about it. There's been a handful of companies that will see the review and they'll, they'll be like, hey, you know, we didn't really like it. You know, we don't really, you know, believe. And it is what it is. Like, I, you know, I tell you guys what it is. If you guys don't want me to review your gear, or if you're afraid that I'm going to give it an honest critique, then just don't send it to me. Um, so you kind of run into that a little bit where you, it gets a little sketchy with certain companies, uh, which I'm not a fan of. I'm like, hey, listen, if, you, if you're not confident in your product enough to send it to me and you're afraid that I'm going to, you know, essentially shit on it uh, for whatever reason, uh, then that's really on you. That's not really on me. And I'm not here to, to sit here and just hammer down on, on certain brands or certain gear. I mean, you guys have seen my, my reviews. So, but if I do notice something that I don't like, I will mention it in, in a respectful and professional way. So, um, but in terms of going back to the whole pay thing, I don't get paid for that, uh, for this at all. Um, I feel like that's definitely a huge conflict of interest, right? Because if I did get paid for that, then it'd be like, okay, well, he's just biased. You know, if this company is saying, hey, here are the gloves, we're gonna give you $500 to do a review on these gloves, then obviously it would, there would be like this weird moral obligation to be like, all right, maybe I'll have to say something really nice about it, uh, even though I hate them, you know? So um, I just, I couldn't do that. It would feel, it would not feel right. Morally, it would just feel like crap. Um, but again, to answer the other question, I do get free gear. I've also done collaborations. Most recently, I did a collaboration with Everlast. They reached out to me. Again, not even paid. They just said, hey, we're gonna send you uh, boxing gloves. We'll send you some shoes. We'll send you the new, um, uh, those Protex shoes that look like uh, they have like a Velcro strap on them. Uh, are you okay with partnering with us and doing some like media footage of you using it? And I'm like, yeah, sure, send it over. I'll, I'll, I don't mind, I'm not gonna accept payment, but I will do a collaboration. Good for exposure for you guys, good for exposure for me. Um, and then eventually I'll do a review on it and give them the review. And then people are like, well, how do you, how do, you do that? How do you review something where you collaborated with them? I'm like, simply, I just do the review. Um, I did my top 10 boxing gloves a couple months ago and Everlast, you know, they didn't even make the top 10 for that. So that tells you in terms of transparency where I land. And that's not a knock on Everlast. I just feel like if I make a top 10 list, it's gonna be my own top 10 list, right? It's not gonna be because I did a collaboration with you or, you know, um, you sent me a free headgear and gloves. So I'm just gonna go ahead and throw you in there at part of the, the top 10, just because I feel obligated. So uh, definitely don't get paid, um, but I do get free gear. Uh, hope he, hopefully that answers that question. All right, another great question. Have you ever competed in the pros or the amateurs? Pros, never. Uh, I have never turned pro. I think maybe nine or 10 years ago, it kind of crept in my mind to maybe possibly looking at turning pro. Uh, the only problem with that is I just didn't have the experience level. I didn't have enough amateur fights and I didn't have the mindset. I was not mentally mature to turn pro. And I think that's very important. I think a lot of people make that mistake of turning pro and maybe they have the wrong people in their ear telling them, hey, you should turn pro, but they just don't have the experience both in terms of their mentality and the physicality portion of the training. Um, but I did, I was amateur. So my last amateur fight was in 2015, which seems like it was just yesterday, but it was damn near almost 10 years ago. There's actually a video on my channel of that fight. Um, it was against uh, Jesus Sandoval. Um, who actually trained out of a gym in North Phoenix called Hard Knocks Gym. I don't know if he still trains there. I think the gym is still open, um, but I lost that fight on the cards. Uh, I just wasn't active enough. I didn't let my hands go as enough, uh, enough as, uh, as I wanted to, and I, I didn't land as much as him. So obviously a learning experience from that. Uh, I was trying to counter too much. I was a little bit too defensive. Um, and quite frankly, I kind of gassed out uh, in the last round. So that was really on me. I have nobody to blame but myself. Uh, prior to that was in 2003, long time ago. And that's when I first started boxing. I was uh, 18 at the time. Um, and I actually learned from an old friend I was in the military with. We were both uh, stationed at Cannon Air Force Base in Clovis, New Mexico, which is this tiny, small town. Don't ever, ever go there. Hopefully, if you're watching this, if you're from Clovis, sorry, I apologize, but don't ever go to Clovis. It's just not a place that is uh, very fun to be at. But anyhow, I was stationed there and um, we would go to, he would teach me, I would go to the base gym and I didn't know anything about throwing a punch. Um, I used to watch boxing all the time, but me physically partaking in boxing, I never did. And uh, his name was Christian. Uh, he was a former amateur boxer before before he joined the military. He was from Southern California. I think he was from 
I want to say Reseda. And um, so he would help me train. Uh, and then we would go through the amateur bouts in Amarillo and Lubbock, Texas on the weekends. Uh, we would often go there. They would have smokers, exhibitions, and I had uh, 11 fights at the time. I think I lost seven of them and I won four uh, at the time. And I, I'm still looking, I'm still digging. I'm actually asking um, some old coworkers from back in those days. And even, I think my, my mom might even have some old pictures. I did, we definitely didn't have video back then. Um, if you had video back in like 2002, 2003, it was like a camcorder, like the ones that your dad had. Uh, there was no like smartphones. I think it was singular wireless, if you guys can recall. That was a cell phone provider. That was like before Verizon and even T-Mobile. I think Singular became T-Mobile, not that this is about cell phone service, but uh, back in those days, we had those old Nokia phones. So there was like no way to even videotape. I think I might have a couple of photos. I gotta, I gotta dig those up to show you guys. But um, yeah, amateur fights, but pro I did not. All right, so what is your favorite boxing glove? That's a very, very great question. Uh, very hard to answer, but I'd say currently my favorite boxing glove, the one I find myself using the most is probably my Bayonetta PUL HH premium boxing gloves. That's a lot to say. Um, they were number one in my, my top 10 boxing glove. Excuse me, for very good reason. Um, you know, made in Mexico, very rugged feeling with the leather. Um, uh, again, if you guys have watched any of my videos, you guys know I'm a big fan of puncher style gloves. I've mentioned it before, it's no secret. Um, uh, that glove is a, a combination of horsehair and foam. Extremely comfortable, perfect thumb. Just like a perfect glove for myself. And I, you know, me, I would not recommend something to others that I would not use myself. Um, so those gloves are just like basically perfect for me. And those are currently my, my favorite. They look awesome too, the, the color spec on mine. They're that kind of like a forest green metallic gold, um, but they, they look amazing. I get a lot of compliments on them. Um, add the fact that Edgar, the boxing collector who I purchased them from, he's an awesome guy, great customer service. That's just kind of like the cherry on top, right? Uh, but those are currently my favorites. I still love my Eyes of Supremes, the young MK1 Select gloves. But if I had to choose one glove right now, I would say uh, those Bayonettos. And again, that can always change in the future. I review and I use so many different gloves over the years that, you know, things can change or they can stay the same. But currently, uh, the Bayonettos. Alrighty, so next question. Uh, what do you do with all your gear? Um, so, I do a little bit of, of combination of things. So, um, one, I sold plenty of gear on my Instagram. That's where I've gone mostly. I'll just post it on my story uh, for certain gloves that I'm, I'm putting up for sale. Um, I've also donated a ton of gear over the years to a lot of local gyms. Um, I try to go with like the nonprofit gyms, uh, the gyms that can really use the equipment. Maybe they might not have the budget to afford new gear all the time. So I try to go to those more frequently just because I'd rather give my equipment to underprivileged uh, individuals, whether it's kids, adults, just people who can't afford boxing gear, I'd rather give that to them. So I definitely donate a lot uh, to a lot of local gyms. Uh, Gonzalez Boxing Gyms, I've given a lot of gear to, to Coach Gonzalez. Um, Gonzo's Gym in Phoenix, uh, Against the Ropes, uh, Hoya Boxing Academy, Central United Boxing Gym uh, in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, man, I've given, I think Broadway Boxing Club in Mesa, I've given some gear to a, a long time ago. Um, so I donate a lot and I also uh, have donated I, every year around Black Friday Thanksgiving, um, Adams Boxing, who makes the boxing shoes, Carlos Adams, he also has a, uh, a deal where you can put all your gear you want to give away in a box and they, they send it to Mexico for the kids out in Mexico to use that. So I do that as well, but I'm not, I'm not a, into collecting boxing equipment. I don't have you know, uh, an entire closet just full of boxing gear, collecting dust. I just, it makes no sense to me. It's kind of pointless to have all of this gear. I mean, if I held onto every single glove I've had over the years, I'd have over a thousand. And that's just dumb for me to have that amount of equipment in my house. So um, yeah, donate, sell, uh, give away. Uh, I've pretty much done it all. And that's what I usually do with all of my gear. What's your favorite food or thing to eat? Um, well, I have two answers to that question. Uh, my favorite cuisine, I guess my favorite like um, type of food to eat would be Filipino food. That's what I grew up eating. Senegang, adobo, milaga, um, uh, dinaguan, 
you name it, like every Filipino dish uh, I love to eat. That's what I love. Um, if I were to pick like one dish, like kind of like a guilty pleasure dish that I, I, I would, I, if you put it in front of me, I'll eat it no matter what, it'd probably be fried chicken. <laughs> you know, whether it's Popeyes, KFC, Church's chicken, uh, the Korean fried chicken, like Bonchon, um, you know, Jolly Bee chicken, but the gravy um, fried chicken is probably uh, my Achilles heel when it comes to food uh, over like all the other junk food, like hamburgers, pizza, all that's all great. But I'd say a really good fried chicken. Yeah, that's 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 all me. For sure. All right, what camera do you use? So I actually use my iPhone. I think I have an iPhone 13 um, that I use to record a lot of my videos. I, I also have video editing software, both on my phone as well as my desktop computer. Uh, that I edit videos with, admittingly, I gotta get better at that and kind of evolve to make the videos look more professional. But I use a phone, I also have a, a Sony uh, camera I use too for a little bit more of the professional looking shots. I use that uh, a lot more. Um, the only problem with using the Sony is that it's kind of inconvenient uh, to use it all the time, especially if it's very like uh, um, on the go and if I'm trying to get things done and uh, just Sony's just takes a little bit more time to set it up, put it on a tripod. Um, I also don't wanna be like at a regular gym and look like a dork with my phone on this tripod, like, you know, I'm some big celebrity. So it's kind of weird that when that way, where the phone is a little bit, the iPhone is a little bit more discreet when you're taking video of yourself. Um, again, I'm not big into like, hey, let me put my tripod here and, you know, I just, it's kind of weird to me in that respect. So at least in like social settings. So yeah, a combination between my iPhone and my Sony camera is what I used um, to, uh, to uh, videotape all of uh, the footage you guys see. Is this your only job, YouTube? Um, how do you afford all your gear? Great question. I kind of think I kind of answered that one earlier. Um, so YouTube is, um, definitely like a side career, I guess if you want to call it. I hate saying side hustle or side job because it kind of sounds demeaning towards what I do on my YouTube channel. Uh, but I started this channel with, I'd say 50-50, 50% of it was just me being, trying to explore a little bit outside of my comfort level, making my first couple of videos. And a lot of, some of it was by accident. I, I mentioned this in an interview I did with Luis Madrid on Box Talk where um, at the time when I made this channel and I made my first video, which was the Cleto Reyes glove review, um, the only uh, guy that was really doing consistent uh, boxing equipment reviews was um, Rate This Gear. And he, he did awesome videos and um, uh, yeah, I don't think he makes videos anymore, but he did great videos, but I couldn't really find, outside of him, I couldn't find really any good videos on like Cleto Reyes gear. So I, when I finally got my gloves, I, I decided to, just take that chance and make a video so I can kind of pay it forward. So I made that video and then it kind of snowballed uh, from that. But uh, YouTube is just a side career. My main job, my main nine to five is I do facilities management, reg regional facilities management. So what that, encap what that all encompasses is I work with a lot of a trade. So HVAC vendors, plumbing, electrical. I work with landlords. I work with real estate, construction. Uh, new restaurant builds and that is my nine to five. That's what I do uh, every day um, I'm very blessed and very uh, Fortunate to be in that position, but I've also worked very hard I, I've worked ever since I was in the military when I joined the Air Force when I was 17 I have never had a time in my life where I was not employed and, and I work hard for that. So uh, That's essentially my nine to five. So between my full-time job my family boxing the YouTube channel my day is completely booked seven days a week um, and that's what keeps me on my toes which keeps me busy uh, but it keeps a roof over our heads gets bills paid puts food on the table and that's all that matters at the end of the day so that's what i do okay another great one would you ever become a boxing coach man that that one i always got go back and forth with a um, little bit of internal struggle there i'm in my own head um, i think a boxing coach needs to be a teacher um, cause I feel like nowadays anybody can hold the mitts and do any kind of like fancy combination and can tell you, go, go hit the, the heavy bag for 10 rounds. And when you're done with that, go hit the speed bag for four rounds. And when you're done with that, go to the double end bag and blah, blah, blah. And those gloves suck. You should get these other gloves. Don't get those. Like, I feel like that really anybody can do that. 
uh, if they've had enough experience to be around that in the gym. To me, a boxing teacher, which I would want to guess consider myself as if I were to ever take that on, is somebody that tells, shows you why. Not only do I show you the correct fundamentals of boxing, but I have to be able to tell you and show you why you're doing it and why it's effective against whoever's in front of you. What, when you're throwing your jab, when you're throwing your straight punches, you know, when you're throwing your hooks, all of that, I would have to be able to teach you that and to explain why you're doing that. And it would have to be consistent. But I'm also very picky when it comes to people that ask me, hey, would you want to coach me? Because the commitment has to be there from them. It just can't be from me. It has to be from both myself and it has to be from that person. If you're not willing to do the road work, if you're not willing to do the hard work in the trenches to get where you need to be, then I'm probably not the best teacher for you because I would expect that from you. But I thought about it. I haven't quite gotten there yet as, as far as becoming a coach or a teacher. I'm not saying that I'm ruling it out, uh, but currently it's a no. Maybe in the future, I'll say yes to that. All right, what's the best advice on starting a YouTube channel? Um, have a vision and it has to be something that you're passionate about. Now, but I mean, what I mean by saying passionate, you need to be like obsessed with it. Now, for me to be able to put out all this content on this channel uh, with as many videos that I'm putting out every week, I couldn't do this if it didn't excite me or if I hated it or if it felt like it was a, kind of a, like a chore, right? Like if I felt like that way, then I could never put up these videos because it was just, you would get burned out. So it would have to be something that, and it doesn't even have to be boxing, right? It could just be any content, right? It has to be something that you're passionate about and that you can foresee yourself doing for, you know, their, your entire life, if it's part of your lifestyle. You know, you know, I get people asking me, well, you know, I wanna do videos on unboxing, I just don't know where to start. Well, again, have a vision, like what's your goal? What's ultimately your goal? Do you wanna just put boxing videos out of you hitting a heavy bag? Is that your goal? Um, do you wanna review equipment like I do on my channel? Is that your goal? You have to figure out and write that down, what your goal is. If you don't know what your goal is, then you're just wandering randomly out there with no end in sight because you have no idea what your goal is. And that's definitely not a way to start a channel. You know, uh, So that to me is figure out what your, your goal and your vision is for whatever the channel is gonna be, write that down. And then also ask yourself, are you really truly passionate about it? Is it something that you're obsessed about? If it's, oh, I just wanna make a couple of videos about reviews of my iPhone, is that really sustainable? You have to be honest with yourself and ask yourself those questions. That's my best advice if you're looking at starting a YouTube channel. All right, so this kind of goes hand in hand with the last question, which is, uh, do you make a lot of money through YouTube? And the answer to that is no. Um, I mean, you make a decent amount of, of extra money. Um, I, I wouldn't say that it's anything that you're gonna be able to pay your monthly bills with, definitely not. Uh, but it's something that you can enjoy using uh, to buy things with. Uh, but if you're expecting, at least at my level, maybe if you're Mr. Beast, then yes, that's definitely life-changing money, right? Uh, if you're at my level, what I'm doing here, no, that, this is definitely not. This is just something, again, as a side career, something I, I enjoy doing because I love boxing. I'm not doing this for the money. If I was doing this for the money, man, I am in the wrong career choice and um, I would not be living where I'm at now. So um, definitely if it's for the money you're looking to do uh, the YouTube for, you really have to be super viral. Like guys like Mr. Beast and all these channels that have like millions and millions of subscribers is because they're viral and they make content that uh, like everyone around the world can watch. Like boxing is a niche in itself, but boxing glove equipment reviews is even more of a niche, right? You're not, you're really narrowing down who your audience is. Whereas if you do crazy stuff, you know, um, you know, watch Mr. Beast drive his Lamborghini through, you know, jump, jump it off a ramp and go through two flaming, uh, you know, uh, hula hoops and land it in the water. You know, everyone's gonna want to watch that because it's it's crazy shit, right? You have never seen it and you want to see it. Or, you know, watch me build, you know, a hundred homes for the uh, the the, the pe people that are underprivileged in this community and and see me do it. You know, stuff like that. You're gonna get a lot more views and a huge audience through that 
to go viral. So again, kind of going back to my original point, it, you know, I make a decent chunk of change, but it's definitely nothing that you can live off of to answer your question. All right, and the very last question is where do you train? So um, again, kind of like what I mentioned earlier, I'm kind of a gypsy right now because of work, personal life. Um, I have to be very flexible with my time and, and where I can train. So it also depends geographically where I'm at that day. Um, so there's a couple of gyms I go to. Apex is in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, that one's a little further away from where I live. Um, but I do like to go there to do mitt work and train with Tommy uh, as soon as, as much as I can, possibly can. But it's a little bit, bit further out. Um, Dan's gym, which is a Muay Thai uh, slash boxing gym in Mesa, Arizona. It's a little bit closer. I, I've been going there uh, more recently because I take my kids there to train with me. They have amazing group classes. Uh, and I've known Danny, the owner of the gym, for years. I actually know Danny when I used to train at uh, Power MMA and, fin in, and Fitness in Gilbert, Arizona. Power MMA, uh, you may recognize this from some of my older videos. Um, there was actually uh, some old footage I had there. And that's actually around the same time that uh, the Benavides family, so David Benavides, uh, mainly his, brother, his older brother, Jose, uh, Benavides Jr. would train there um, and that's where I was really able to see those guys train and kind of get an idea of what it looks like to be a pro uh, both in terms of the way they train and really how hard they punch so uh, seeing those guys train there um, uh, Danny was one of the, the, the coaches there and then he opened his own gym uh, which went uh, power MMA closed back in 2017 so I've been going to Dan's gym with my kids trained there as well it's a great atmosphere great environment to be in uh, also train at Team Hoye Boxing Academy, Academy which is uh, Rico Hoye's gym in Chandler. Uh, Rico is an ex-pro, many fights. Um, I think he's had a fight or two. Uh, with, I think he fought against Montel Griffin, who, who fought against Roy Jones Jr. Uh, he was also, I, I want to say he was on um, one of those old boxing um, TV shows back in the day. Um, was it called Undisputed? I forgot the name of the show. Uh, it was kind of like the UFC show where they all train uh, together and they try to like reach a spot to become signed with that label um, but he used to be on oh the contender that was what it was called and I think he used to be on that uh, but I trained there as well and then I have like a regular gym uh, gym membership so it just kind of depends on where I'm at what I'm doing that day uh, timing there's a lot that kind of goes into determining like all right what am I going to do that day but at Dan's gym I'm usually there like two to three days a week uh, doing the group training uh, at Dan's gym. So that's uh, typically what I do for my training and where I go. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I did putting it together. Um, hopefully I answered some of the more frequently asked questions. Obviously I'm not gonna be able to answer every single question out there, uh, but I tried to go with the ones that you guys ask a lot of and kind of gave you guys a little bit of a glimpse uh, into my personal life a little bit and uh, tell you guys, you know, the stuff that you guys wanna know. So. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. You know, as usual, put your comments down below and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.